正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 119, Lu Family. On the second morning, when the day just broke out, Jing's and Gu Yu came to wait for Shen Miao. When they entered, they saw Shen Miao sleeping on the couch. And the quilt was gone with a fox fur coat covering her. Both of them were suddenly stupefied. Yesterday, when they left, there was no fox fur coat. So where did this come from? Jing's woke Shen Miao up, and after she woke up, Shen Miao looked at the fox fur coat at a loss. Even though the effect of the plum blossom wine was great, but just like the farm's mistress said. There will not be any dizziness the next day. One's head was not dizzy, but one was unable to recall anything that happened the night before. She could not even remember how she came to this room. Gu Yu held that snow white fox fur coat and said, "Young lady, where does this fox fur coat come from?" Shen Miao took the fox fur coat and shook her head. The chest for young ladies' coats are all here. Is it that young lady took it out when one was drunk yesterday night? Jing Zhen asked probingly, "But why is it that it seems that is one's first time seeing this fox fur coat?" They did not think in any other direction since Shen Miao was after all here last night, and there were guards on duty outside, and nothing happened. It was just that this fox fur coat is strangely here. Shen Miao said, "Bring it out and ask the farmer if it is theirs." When they saw the farm's owner, the owner shook his head. Our family does not have such good fox fur. Lady must have mistaken. Shen Kaiyu fished the fox fur over. This fox fur does not seem to be an ordinary thing. Younger sister, no matter where this comes from, it would be worth a lot. From the handiwork, it looks gorgeous, but the cutting was not done very well, as one feels that it is too big for you to wear. Shen Miao took the fox fur coat. And her heart wondered as she could not remember when she had such a cloak before. But hearing Shen Kaiyu mention that it was worth quite a bit of money, she naturally took it back and lied without changing her expression. Speaking of which, it seems that it was bought previously in the Ding capital. Jing's, keep it. Jing's was racking one's brain, recalling when Shen Miao bought this cloak. But when she heard her say so. She did not continue pondering and immediately complied before keeping the cloak in the chest. Shen Miao shook her head, not caring where the cloak came from. But on this trip to Zhaochun City, one feared there would be many places that will require money, and that now Shen Zin was not like previously. If there was a hard press day, one could exchange this cloak for a lot of money to spend. Thinking of that. Those messy conjectures became dispensable. Time, as always, went exceptionally fast. Looking at the scenery with a different state of mind would also be different. Even though one had to go all the way to Zhaochun City, the route was bumpy and muddy, and one would be fatigued with the journey. Shen Miao did not even mention a word of tiredness. Those of the front section of the Shen family's army that were implicated, and Shen Zin's confidants that came along. All became closer to one another due to the shared joy and hardship on the road. Since leaving the capital in the second month, the start of spring, one finally arrived in Zhaochun City in the early days of the eighth month. The Zhaochun City was located at the border of Mingqi and was indeed a very small city. If one were to speak about the highest-ranked official in the city, it would be the Guarding General Lu Lu Suai. All the while. Lu Suai protected the Zhaochun City's people to live and work in peace, but because this city and the Ding capital were far too apart, everyone knew that this job was not considered an ideal position. Moreover, after so many years, the Lu family army was almost dispersed, and the Lu family had nothing more than just military glory in Zhaochun City. When the guards at the city gates saw Lu Zuyan's Lu family placard. They were suddenly in awe and got someone to send the news to the Lu family. The Zhaochun city was only that big, so when the Shen family brought such a large group of people into the city, the commoners immediately noticed, and all came forward to inquire. When they heard that the Lu family's married daughter had brought her entire family over, shortly it was bustling. Jing's quietly parted the carriage's curtains and looked out before saying to Shen Miao, "Young lady." This is the Zhaochun City. Shen Miao took a glimpse outside. The Zhaochun City was not as unbearable as the noble young ladies had spoken about. Even though it was small, it was also lively. It was just that the sandy winds were greater, 
and because of the bigger sandy winds, the female complexion would normally become slightly darker, and not as delicate as those females in the capital. Perhaps locals are more open-minded or perhaps the people are very lively, and active, they had an unruly appearance which made others feel full of vitality. There was no lack of things to buy at the stores by the street. As Jing's looked, she became happier, and the apprehension that she previously had were swept away, young lady. There is not much difference between Zhao Chun City and the Ding capital. Does Zhao Zhao like this place? Lu Zhu Yan asked uneasily. She was most afraid that Shen Miao was not used to this place. Lu Zhu Yan grew up in Zhao Chun City so there were no problems for her. Shen Kaiyu and Shen Xin were generals who experienced battles, so one need not say anything more. It was only her delicately raised daughter that need her to worry. Shen Miao smiled. It is rather good here. Only with that Lu Zhu Yan's heart settled down, and smiled, let us go to your Wei Zhu's, aka maternal grandparents, house. Ever since you were aware of things, you have never seen her before. You still have two Jiu Jiu, three older brothers, and one older sister. They are all good people so they will definitely like you. Lu Furin passed away very early and Lu Suai has been single for all these years. The Lu family has three siblings, and Lu Zhu Yan was the youngest sister. When Shen Miao was born the Lu family traveled to the capital to see her, but after that because of the far distance between Zhao Chun city and the capital, and since the other side cannot leave, Shen Miao and the Lu family never met before. In her previous life, Shen Miao's impression of the Lu family was also vague so when she heard Lu Zhu Yin speak of them, she smiled. At that moment in front of the Lu family's residence's door, there was a crowd of people. Some commoners came to watch the activity, and also the Lu family's people. Lu Suai stood right at the front with two middle-aged couples behind him, and there were three youths and one young female behind the couple. Those youths had upright features and awe-inspiring presences. Even though they were young, they had the bearing of valiant generals. That young female's complexion was a healthy wheat color, her eyes were almond-shaped, and had diamond-shaped lips that with one look, one could tell that she has a bold, and aggressive character. She tugged the youth beside, and asked, eldest brother, what do you say of the kind of person that Bia younger sister is? The youth that she was pulling had a good temper, and warmly said, Of course, she is not a bad person. What not bad? Cannot you speak clearer? The young female was unforgiving, only look pretty. You look at all those young ladies that came to our Zhao Chun city from the Ding capital. Each one of them was beautiful but their character was so delicate that it made one feel hateful. Furthermore, the young lady who came to this city to visit said that she knew Bia younger sister. Her voice was loud but one was able to hear her crisp voice, one heard that Bia younger sister's reputation is not good. Tanner. A strict voice interrupted the young female's words, it was Lu Suai who spoke, and fiercely glared at the young female, Tanner. The young lady quickly stood up straight and stuck her tongue out and no longer spoke. She did not speak but the youngest youth, who seemed to be more lively, came over, and pulled Danner's hand. Yi Yi, aka grandfather, is biased. This be a younger sister has just come, and he is already protecting her to this level. I want to see what kind of character this be a younger sister is. Shin Xin was often at the northwestern region fighting battles, and would often pass through Zhao Chun city on the way. Thus they would come over every year so Shen Kaiyu and the Lu family were acquainted. If one were to speak of what the Lu family was interested in, it would most probably be Shen Miao, who they had not seen since her birth. The vastness under heavens was big, and also small. Occasionally there would also be officials that were demoted that would come over, so they were also aware of the Ding capital's rumors. Over time, what kind of person Shen Miao was, that idiotic D daughter as the rumors said, was spread all over in this Zhao Chun city. Knowing one by reputation was not as good as meeting the person. To finally have the opportunity to meet today, many commoners surrounded the area, and it seems that the majority of them wanted just to see how did Shen Miao look like. Just as this young female and youth were whispering, an entourage and a carriage slowly came over, and the one leading was Shen Xin, with Shen Kaiyu, 
and the rest following while behind them was a troop of soldiers, father. Shin Xin dismounted, and Shen Kaiyu also quickly followed, and ran over to Lu Suai with a smile, Wei Zhou, Lu Suai's eyes gave the father, and son a swipe before landing on the horse carriage. After all, when one sees too often one will not relish it, what Lu Suai wanted to see the most was still his granddaughter. A slightly rounded Furin smiled, and said warmly, Zhao Gu, aka husband's younger sister, and Zhao Zhao should be in the horse carriage. One fear is that they are very tired after such a long journey. When the voice sounded, one saw the curtain of the horse carriage opening. Both, Jing's, and Gu Yu supported Lu Zhu Yan out, before Lu Zhu Yan held her hand towards the carriage, and brought a little young lady out. That young lady bent over and disembarked from the horse carriage. When she raised her head, a charming, and pretty face was revealed, and when she turned around she was already dragged to the front by Lu Zhu Yan. Zhao Zhao, we have returned home. That young female, by the name of Tanner, opened her mouth but did not speak. Zhao Chun City's sandy winds were large and dry, thus the female's complexion would be darker. It was rare to see a fair complexion, not to mention this fair young female. That young female had very delicate features, and because of her snow-white complexion, she was like a painting. Black brows, eyes, small nose, and red moist lips. But the thing that made others amazed was her bearing. Lu Zhu Yan held her hands, and she looked like a very delicate young lady. Under Lu Zhu Yan's valiant, and formidable air, she did not look at all weak but even seemed more dignified, and noble, as if she was the leading character instead. The surrounding commoners and the Lu family's people were somewhat dumbfounded. When one saw another it was to see the other's bearing. The appearance was important but aptitude was the most important for women aside from beauty. This Shen family's young lady's bearing was much more impressive than her appearance. She took each step with Lu Zhu Yan forward till they reached in front of Lu Suai. Lu Suai was tall, big and had deep features. Compared to Shen Zin's ruggedness, he appeared to be much more serious, and unreasonable. He frowned as he stared at Shen Miao. With this kind of cold appearance, if those young ladies who were a little less courageous saw it, they would directly cry in fear. Shen Miao looked like a delicate young lady from the Ding capital, so everyone thought that she would certainly be frightened. Tanner and the youth beside had their lips hooked up as if watching a show. Shin Miao raised her head and looked face to face at Lu Suai. Her facial features were smooth, and her body was soft, apparently not nervous because of Lu Suai's reaction. Her gaze was calm, and she even slightly smiled like the attitude of a superior to a subordinate which startled Lu Suai for a moment. Like the attitude of a superior to a subordinate, the Lu family was like the city lord of Zhao Chun City, where would there be a superior? Lu Suai froze for a moment before suddenly laughing. His laughter made the surrounded nervous people surprised. Lu Suai patted Shen Miao's head, and said with loud warm energy, Girl! Why are you not greeting me? Wei Zhou, aka maternal grandparent. Shen Miao gently answered. Lu Zhu Yan then was relieved. Lu Su I was different from Shen Xin. Shen Xin spoiled Shen Miao to heavens, but Lu Su I has been a stern father forever. Even she was a bit afraid of Lu Su I when she was young. Now that Lu Su I was much older, he was not as dignified as before but his habit of scaring young ladies was unchanged. One feared that he would scare Shen Miao, but fortunately, Shen Miao's response was not that big so Lu Zhu Yan was somewhat proud. Not only did Shen Miao's attitude make Lu Zhu Yan feel relieved, but at the same time, it made the surrounding people surprised. The young ladies from the Ding capital seemed to only know how to weep endlessly and lead an extravagant life. Tanner said unconvincingly to the youth beside, must be pretending not to be afraid. The oldest youth of them, who also had the best temper, was however looking at Shen Miao thoughtfully and did not speak. Lu Zhu Yan pulled Shen Miao up to introduce her. Other than Lu Suai, there were two sons in the Lu family, which were Shen Miao's two uncle, Lu Yan Ying, and Lu Yan Tai. Lu Yan Ying's wife was Madame Yu, a gentle, soft, and genuine female. She gave birth to two sons, Lu Ling, and Lu Sa. Chen Miao's second uncle, 
Luyan Tai's wife was Madame Ma, her maiden family did some business, and she was astute and vigorous. She gave birth to a pair of sisters and a brother. The older sister was Lu Tan, and the younger brother was Lu Qian. Lu Ling was Shen Miao eldest Biao brother, he was currently 18, and had a gentle temper, the same as Madame Yu. When one sees him, he would politely, and warmly greet. He was a very thoughtful person. Second Biao older brother, Lu Su was 17, and also Lu Ling's blood sibling but had a fierce temper, coldly scoffing at Shen Miao before ridiculing, can the Ding capital city young lady withstand the wind, and sand? Lu Yang Ying kicked him fiercely. Lu Tan was 16 this year and seemed to be suspicious of Shen Miao, thus her attitude was not warm, and more curious. Lu Tan's younger brother was the same age as Shen Miao and directly looked at Shen Miao to size her up. He had a rounded face and seemed to be picky. After greeting the entire Lu family, and identifying everyone, Lu Su I then let Lu Zhu Yin bring them into the residence. The Lu residence was a place in which one big family lived and got along harmoniously. The Shen family was placed in the courtyard that Lu Zhu Yan had before she was married. When the servants went to tidy up the rooms, everyone was in the main hall talking. After the initial bustling, serious matters were discussed. The Lu family and the Shen family were different. When the Shen family was in the Ding capital, because Shen Gui and Shen Wan took the route of a civil official, different from Shen Xin. Naturally there was no discussion of the matters in court. Moreover, they were not of the same blood and separated by different bellies, so one would not bring out private matters. The Lu family was different, they were all one big family. Not only Lu Yan Ying, and Lu Yan Tai could talk here, but even the younger generation, Lu Ling, and the rest, could also listen and even the female members could too. When Shen Xin's entire family came, naturally one would want to listen. Yan Er, what are your plans with this trip back to Zhao Chun City? Lu Su I asked. The letter that was sent previously to them had informed them of the matter of Shen Xin's military tally being confiscated, and that he was moving out to Zhao Chun City to guard. It was just that at that time, it was difficult to discuss things when they were far apart. Thus questions were asked now that they were here. Lu Zhu Yin smiled, and said, Why father ask this? Since one has come to Zhao Chun City, naturally is to settle down here as well. Regarding the matter of reviving the Lu family's army, both Lu Zhu Yan and Shen Xin did not know how to tell Lu Suai. With Lu Suai's old-fashioned character, one felt that it would take some time. Third younger sister, it was however Lu Yan Ying who spoke. He looked at Shen Xin, and hesitated for a moment before asking, but for the Shen family's army to be confiscated like this, is there no room for redemption? They were military generals and could understand the significance of an army to a general. Shen Xin had been busily engaging in warfare for so many years, so how could it be easy for him to suddenly be an idle commoner? If it was them. They fear that it would be difficult to calm down from that outrage. Shen Xin cupped his hands, eldest brother, rather than reproach, it would be better to let nature take its course. This Zhao Chun city is also quite good, I also want to live my life where Zhu Yan grew up. Hearing that, Lu Suai looked at Shen Xin a few more times, and the serious look on his face eased up a bit. It is rare to see you have changed your temperament. Everyone was clear of Shen Xin's straightforward, and bustling temperament so when he spoke so calmly, it was beyond everyone's expectations. Shen Miao looked at the Lu family's expression, and suddenly asked, Grandfather, one heard that there are two Ju at the border of Zhao Chun City. With that remark, the surrounding suddenly turned silent. A moment later, Madame Ma reacted. She had a frank, and straightforward character, and said with a smile, Zhao Jiao need not be afraid. Those two Ju are all outside the city and dare not come in. Even if they come in, our Lu family's soldiers will chase them away. It has been safe, and sound for so many years, thus it is not something to fear about. Shen Kaiyu also thought that Shen Miao was scared, and softly comforted. Jiao Niang, aka maternal uncle's wife, is right. Zhao Zhao does not need to be afraid. Shen Miao's eyes dropped. Zhao Chun City was a small border town, 
and naturally, it would be harassed by nomads. The Eastern Tuju was one of them. These people were strong and had fast horses so when they battle, they would be very ferocious. If they were to fight for real, the one at the disadvantage might be Ming Chi. It was because Zhao Chun city was easy to defend and difficult to attack, and combined with the Lu family's reputation, these two Ju dared not advance, and only harassed a little at the border. Every year from the 8th to 10th months, the two Ju will suffer from droughts and will come to Zhao Chun city to steal stuff. After some small fights, they would be chased away. The commoners were used to it and did not put it to heart. However, Shen Miao remembers that it was this year that a major event happened in Zhao Chun city. She nodded her head, and inadvertently said, the Lu family's army is as brave as father's Shen family's army. In that case, when the two Ju attacks the city, there will not be any problems resisting. Lu Sui's face stiffened, and Lu Yan Ying's, and Lu Yan Tai's expressions became ugly, and even a little embarrassed. Since there were no opponents, the Lu family could not afford to pay for such huge military expenditures, and coupled with the fact that Emperor Wen Hu in the Ding capital simply did not care about Zhao Chun city, thus there was no difference when the Lu family's army dispersed. The soldiers went home to farm, and do business, and the remaining Lu family's army only require some scattered money. Other than going nearly to the border to deter the few Tu Ju, there was nothing to do. Comparing the Lu family's army, the Shen family's army was simply slapping the Lu family's faces. Lusa immediately became hostile, and looked at Shen Miao with extreme anger. What is your meaning? Lu Ling quickly pulled him back, and looked at Shen Miao gently. Second younger brother's words are too serious. The a younger sister must not be as short-sighted as second younger brother. Those who come from the Ding capital are not the same. Lu Tan's lips twitched. We have been staying here for so many years in peace but when be a younger sister comes over, one fears this, and that. Do not worry, the two Ju will not be able to enter the city. This has been going on for so many years. Shen Miao gently smiled, what happens when they enter the city? Lu Tan did not expect that Shen Miao would counterattack, and could not help but be surprised for a moment. Lu Suai who was sitting in the highest seat did not speak. The Lu family educates the next generation as such, by letting them fight and letting them debate so that they can grope out more things. The elders would sit at the side, and watch. Shen Miao's words just now were interesting, and since Lu Suai did not speak, it was not good for Lu Yan Ying, and the rest to do it so they could only look as the younger generation spoke. How could they possibly enter the city? Lu Tan was flustered and exasperated. All that those two Ju want are goods and tools. Once the tenth month is over, their drought will be over so naturally, they will not do anything. How is it easy since one would need to do battle after entering the city? Shen Miao's expression did not change as she lightly said, for ten years. They only required food and tools. Is not this too easy to satisfy? Everyone was surprised for a moment. Lu Qian's age was similar to Shen Miao so he asked curiously, Little Bi a young sister, what do you mean? If it was me, one would not be satisfied just with that. Shen Miao replied warmly, They have brave soldiers, strong horses, and planes to retreat. All of these as compared to the scattered soldiers in the Zhao Chun city, and their humble weapons, are just too good to pass. Why not go, and fight for it? If one did not fight before, it was only because one was not familiar with the Zhao Chun city's routes but after feeling them for about over ten years, a small city like this, even if one comes once a year, and only goes to one place each time, a map can be drawn up. She tilted her head and gently smiled, when the two armies confront one another, one side is fully prepared but did not take action. Is it because one was abiding by the rules in those years or had to abide by someone's rules? For a long time, no one in the room spoke. The two Ju had no wild schemes with the Zhao Chun city, and every time would only steal some stuff due to the lack of suppliers, thus everyone was used to it. Who knew that Shen Miao's words today? had awakened them to a side that they had never dreamt about. Correct. The Tuju had everything, and for people who had everything, 
Why would they not have wild schemes to grab Zhaochun City, and how would the people in the city be able to withstand it? Lu Su's expression slowly changed as he looked at Shen Miao, even though his tone of voice was still not good. As compared to the anger before, it had eased up a lot. Then what do you want to say? I find that the Lu family's army is not tightly assembled as the Shen family's army. Shen Miao said it politely. How was it not as tightly assembled as the Shen family's army? It was a sheet of loose sand. Seeing the flash of pain in Lu Su's expression, Shen Miao gently smiled. When one was young, one heard mother mentioning about Wei Zhu's heroic days of leading the Lu family's army. Have Wei Zhu ever thought of restoring the glory of the Lu family's army? Restoring the glory of the Lu family's army. Everyone in the room sucked in a mouthful of cold air. Even Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan also looked at Shen Miao incredulously. Lu Qian and Lu Tan brightened before one's eyes. The younger generation was always looking towards the unlimited glorious scene so when Shen Miao painted such a scene, it would make those youths, and young ladies' hearts greatly satisfied. Lu Ling and Lu Su were older, and their appearance was not as eager, but one can still see a trace of hope in Lu Su's eyes. Lu Su I looked at Shen Miao for a while before laughing suddenly, you little girl have a rather big ambition. It is rare to see the kind of place in the Ding capital that could raise such a hard character. Between his words, there was some sense of admiration and appreciation. Lu Zhu Yan and Xin Xin immediately became proud. However it was only for a short moment as Lu Su I signed, and said with an unknown tone, Girl, it is just that the restoration of the Lu family's army's glory is not as easy as you speak about. Money is required for army provisions. How would the Lu family bear such a burden? To support an army but without any usage. Girl. Do you want to squander all my Lu family's money into it? Thousands of days were required to train an army but it would be only used for a moment. Those soldiers were trained using the country's treasury for the Lu family's army, which was far at the border since Emperor Wen Hua could then feel assured of his safety. It meant that the Lu family's army would not be allocated money. For the Lu family to be burdened by this military expense, but not knowing who they would be dealing with, or when they would be fighting with, was indeed a sad thing. The court is not willing to give the Lu family money, because the Lu family's army is not outstanding. If the Lu family's reputation was impressive and won battles, naturally to calm the forces in court, His Majesty would take the initiative to send money over. As for enemies, Xin Miao smiled slightly, there is the Qin country, and Great Liang far away, and nearer there is the Tuju and the Zhong Nu. Ming Qi never lacks opponents, and with the military force's dedication, naturally, one will be sent to further battles. Wei Zhou, what do you think? Not to mention what she said, this light smile, and chat seemed to have shown her ability to break the other's thoughts, and her gentle smile and tilt of the head had so great ambitions. She was a delicate young lady from a precious place but made one feel that she was a female who had crawled from the lowest rung of society. Lu Su I suddenly got angry, and stood up before casting off his sleeves, and coldly speaking, no need to mention restructuring the Lu family's army again. I do not agree. Zhu Yan, bring them down to rest, and not bring up this matter again. Finishing. He did not even take a look at the rest of the people in the hall and left. Lu Suai's anger came unfathomably, and Lu Zhu Yan was also very puzzled. Shen Kaiyu stroked Shen Miao's head, and stood firmly on Shen Miao's side. Younger sister is great. Lu Su swept a look over, and said softly to Lu Ling, This little bi a younger sister is not simple. Lu Ling laughed, perhaps. Lu Tan's lips twitched. What is so great about talking glibly? Even Yi Yi was angered. Lu Qian shook his head as his eyes were staring dazzlingly at Shen Miao who was talking to Shen Kaiyu. Not only know how to talk glibly. Older sister is prettier than you. Lu Tan glared at him fiercely. 